What kind of genius does field work in Wyoming in February when there's more than a foot of snow on the ground? This kind of genius. That's the frontier formation. And below it, right in that valley, is the Maori Shale. These are Cretaceous units. The frontier is about 100 million years old. As you can see, it's a prograding, coursing and cleaning upward succession of deltaic sands, delta fronts, mouth bars, and so on. And below is a source rock, the famous Maori Shale, which is, of course, older than the frontier. So about 110, 105, something like that. This is not a really great exposure to see the details of the sedimentology and traces and architecture of the frontier. It gives you an idea that it's a coarsening upward para sequence or delta front. So what we're gonna do is go a couple of miles down the road, take a look at a nice road cut cross section through the frontier and see what we see. By the way, I should mention Casper, Wyoming is a few miles that way down the road. Alcova, Wyoming is a few miles down the road that way. And we're right along this highway that goes into Casper from Alcova or from Laramie, if you're going that way. So we're gonna take a look at the rocks in another couple of minutes here, see the frontier in some gory detail. And in a separate video, we're gonna look at some of the Maori on the shores of Alcova Reservoir. Hang tight, I'm gonna show you some cool things in a second. Okay, so we're along Highway 487 right now. South is that way, north is that way. And we're a few miles south of the first outcrop. And what we're looking at is a full succession from the lowermost frontier formation down the road all the way up to the top of the frontier and even the Cody Shale on top. So there's a transgressive surface up there. But just to put it into context so you know what you're gonna be seeing, this is a you know cartoon stratigraphic column of the frontier at this outcrop. Um, you notice it's fairly heterolithic all the way throughout. There is some sandier bits up towards the top thicker sandy beds, but even then it's not just homogenous sand, it's pretty um, interspersed with muds and silts. So it's an overall gently, gently coarsening upward succession. Off on the far side of the diagram, I've drawn a cross section of the different parts of the delta that I've labeled off on the, on the measured section, and below that is a map view. So what I've done is work them away from bottom to top, or from far side to close side on the maps. Uh, we have a pro delta, which is largely muddy, not much silt in there, not much sand, it's mostly mud. Um, might not be a lot of traces in there. The lower delta front or distal delta front is where we start seeing a lot of bioturbation. There's a lot of silt, mud, very bioturbated, very heter heterolithic. The media delta front starts to get a lot more heterolithic, a lot more sand, thicker sand, still bioturbation quite a bit. And by the time we get up into the mouth bar, the most proximal part of the delta front, that's the highest energy part of the system. There tends to be least amount of bioturbation, but greatest amount of trough cross bedding, uh, ripples and, and sedimentary structures associated with high energy. Let's test this idea by going and taking a look at the rock. And the bottom is the oldest. This is the lowest part of the succession of the frontier formation at this outcrop. And as you can see behind me, it's pretty muddy looking. Uh, there's a lot of wash on it, but it's overall a very mud and silt dominated succession. The thin beds you see peeking out are sands. Um, but you get the feeling that there's really not a lot of reservoir quality material in here. Um, it's mostly fine grain, which is typical of a pro delta or distal delta front, lower delta front. There are some exceptions, like this bed up here. Uh, this has some very low angle bedding. At first you might look and think, oh, maybe it's um, hummocky or swaley bedding. It does seem to go in one direction than the other, but it's actually very low angle bedding with no evidence of hummocks or swales. Our next stop is gonna wander over that way and take a look at the medial and upper part of the delta. And here we are in the sandier, but still heterolithic facies up on the hillside. And let's take a closer look. And the closer we examine these things, the more we start to see there's a lot going on. There's all sorts of burrowing, there's things like tychicnus and paleophycus and planolites and some larger thalassinoides in the sand and, and fine grain interval. In the thicker sandy beds with its remnants of bedding, we have some ophiomorpha, the usual creatures we'd expect there, maybe some conicnus over there. And there's even some interesting calcite beds. A lot going on in this heterolithic facies from a reservoir quality and connectivity point of view, there's a whole lot that might be impacting fluid flow through here. All right, we made it. We're up in that cleaner sand facies, and you can see prominent cross bedding, fairly planar, 
heading due west, which is interesting because at this time the Western Interior Seaway is to the east. So these dunes are actually being constructed opposite and they're going landward and you can see them all throughout these beds, which brings up the very strong possibility that these are tidal dunes and tidal sands that are being transported in a landward direction. There's some indication of maybe some burrowing that might be a little bit more oxidized, uh, but overall they look pretty clean. There's not a lot living in here, which is consistent with high energy tidal dunes um, in a mouth bar or a tidal dune in a distributary channel or something. They're high energy, not a lot of things like to live in them. By contrast, just below in the heterolithics, we start to pick up our friends, the thalassinoides and paleophycus and all those little shrimps and worms that like lower energy systems. They're still cross bedding. It's just not that clean, high energy, sandy deposit. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this brief introduction to the Frontier Formation Deltaic system south of Casper, Wyoming. As always, remember, if you're working on any sort of clastic reservoir or even a carbonate reservoir in subsurface, and you really want to understand what you're seeing on that seismic, that well log, gravity data, whatever, come out to the outcrops, look at some modern environments, get your hands dirty, step away from the computer, stop playing with your Python and Excel sheets, and visit the rocks, visit the outcrops, visit the modern systems. They're here, you should be too. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.